Hello students, welcome back to the channel. My name is Namrata and as requested, I am here in front of you to discuss J Main 2021 paper solution which was held on 26 February shift 1. So without wasting any time, let's get started. On your screen, you can see J Main 2021 exam pattern details. Of course, you know the examination mode was an online based and the exam duration was 3 hours. Of course, the subjects were physics, chemistry and mathematics but this year, types of questions was changed. So, each subject had 30 questions. 30 questions were divided into two sections. Section 1 contained 20 MCQs. If you do it correct, you get plus 4. If you do it wrong, you get a minus 1. And if you leave the question, you get a 0. What about section 2? Section 2 contains 10 numerical answer questions, out of which you have to select 5. You have to attempt only 5. Yes. And the marking scheme was for numerical answer. If you do it right, you get plus 4. And if you leave the question, or if you do incorrect, then you get a 0. Best part, because if there is no negative marking, then you can always attempt the question. Let's not leave section 2 unattempted. Okay. And of course, the maximum marks of the paper was 300. Now, let's dive into the detailed paper analysis of mathematics section. For convenience, we have divided the whole mathematics syllabus into five different sections. Algebra, coordinate geometry, calculus, trigonometry and miscellaneous. Here miscellaneous involves mathematical reasoning, statistics and probability distribution. As you can see that algebra, from algebra there were 10 questions and from calculus there were 11 questions. Total 21 questions from these two chapters out of 30 by the way. More than 50% of paper were covered by algebra and calculus. Right? Let's talk about the difficulty level of the paper. So here, if you see the color coding, green color is for the easy and gray color is for the medium and maroon color is for the difficult. So you can see overall, if I talk about algebra, 7 were easy, 2 were moderate on medium and 1 was difficult out of 10 questions. And likewise for coordinate geometry, trigonometry, calculus and miscellaneous. So if you see, only three questions were difficult, were challenging, I would say. So overall paper, I would say it was easy to moderate level, right? And let's move on and talk about the 11th and 12th class distribution. In the paper, if I talk about 11th class, 40% question were from class 11 and 60% of the question were from class 12th. It is advisable to equally prepare class 11th and 12th at the time of preparation. Alright, so this was a detailed paper analysis. Let's quickly dive into the actual paper discussion. Let's get started with the very first question. The question in front of your screen is from the chapter permutation and combination. Very basic question which is asking us to calculate the number of 7 digit numbers with some of the digits equal to 10 and found by using 1, 2 and 3 only. Okay. So for example, if I try to make one such number, if I try to make one such 7 digit number, I will need 1, 2 and 3. I don't know how many times. Let's tackle. So if I take 1, 3 in my 7 digit number and if I decide to take 1, 2 as well in my 7 digit number, so that now I can see that we have a sum of 5. Right. We need to create sum of 10 of these 7 digit number. I need 5 more digits. Right, I need 5 more digits and the total of remaining 5 should be what? 5. That means obviously those 5 digits were, will be 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Now this is a 7 digit, right? If you have selected 7 digit and sum of 3 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 7, is 10. Isn't it? Okay, so such such cases we need to think about. This is a very thoughtful question. We need to talk about the Number of cases. How many cases I can create so that I'll be sure that I am not missing any case in such question that is extremely important. You shouldn't miss any case. Then only you can say that your answer would be right. 
okay cool so this is one such case right if i talk about another case okay so if i say that since here it is 5 1 right 5 1 i have used if i use 4 1 in my number right such that the sum is now 4 then i need what i actually need 6 more right so that the total can be 10 so what i can do is i can get three twos over here right now you calculate this is what six this is four sum is 10 and total number of digits i have used over here is seven again this is case number two actually if you think about another case you'll realize that you are not able to think about another case if i talk about three one in this now the sum is three i need seven more how to get that by using two and three you will not be able to create this you need seven more right so you need two two and one three right so here you have one two three four five six digit i am looking for seven digit number that means case three is not possible only these two cases are possible you need to just solve these two cases right we have already discussed number of digits uses seven and sum of digits should be ten case number one is five one one two and one three right now we need to think about how we can arrange these number so that we can form multiple ten, uh, multiple seven digit numbers right so you can see that five identical and two different total seven digits are there so arrangement can be done by seven factorial by five factorial ways that is seven multiplied six that is 42 case number one is sorted let's move on to case number two Let's move on to case number 2. So, here you have 4, 1 and triple 2, right? Again, 7 digits, so 7 factorial by 4 identical, so 4 factorial and you have 3 other identical, so 3 factorial. That is 7 multiplied 6 multiplied 5 by 3 factorial. These two are gone and you have 35 with you. 42 plus 35 is your answer which is equal to what? 77 which is exactly matching with option a all right mind-blowing question in front of your screen from the chapter binomial and calculus yes hybrid question of two chapters which is asking us to calculate the maximum value of the term independent of t in the expansion of this binomial expression involving t and x when x belongs to 0 to 1 okay so basically i'll break this question into two parts first of all what i want is a term independent of t right i want to get a term independent of t right first of all i want that okay once i get that i am interested in maximum value of that particular expression which is by the way in x only okay so let's begin how to get any term independent of any variable in any binomial expression you all know you have done this so many times right so first we need to calculate the general term if i'm talking about a plus b raised to power n this is a binomial exp expression right so general term would be what ncr a raised to power n minus r b raised to power r right let's write down the general term of this here we have n equals to what 10 isn't it a is this and b is this so we have tr plus 1 equals to 10 cr tx raised to power 1 by 5 raised to power 10 minus r and then we have this b 1 minus x raised to power 1 by 10 by t times r right this is what general term once i get the general term i am interested in a term independent of t that means i'll collect the power of t and make it equal to 0 yes that's how we do this question tr plus 1 equals to 10 cr and we have now t raised to power 10 minus r minus r that means 10 minus 2r right this is the complete power of t and we have x with us x raised to power 10 minus r by 5 and we have 1 minus x raised to power 1 by 10 this is tr plus 1 and what i want is power of t to be equal to 0 hence 10 minus 2r equals to 0 that means r equal to 5 if r is 5 that means t6 is the term which is independent of t which is 10 c5 this is of course 0 t raised to power 0 is 1 so x raised to power 1 and square root of 1 minus x here we have r as well r by 10 5 by 10 is what 1 by 2 square root of 1 minus x okay cool this is t6 term independent of t we have got nicely and now we are interested in 
the maximum value of T6. Yes, the maximum value of T6, how to get that? So what I'll be doing is I'll be taking it as f of x, function of x. To get maximum value of f of x, I'll be differentiating it. 10c5 is constant. As it is, I'll be applying product rule in this. So now you have this as it is, 1 minus x. Differentiation of this one is 1. Plus, now you have x constant for now. And you have to differentiate this, which would be what? 1 by 2 root 1 minus x. And you have minus 1 as well. That should be equal to 0. f dash x equals to 0 will give us the value of x at which fx is maximum. Right? Can be maximum. Yes, of course f dash x would be equal to what 10 c 5 as it is okay i am actually making it zero so this let's equate it to zero if you do that you have twice of one minus x equal to x if you solve it what would you get you actually get 3x equals to 2 x equals to 2 by 3 the moment you have x equal to 2 by 3 this is a point where you can get maximum value right moreover at 2 by 3 yes so now, at 2 by 3, if you put it over here, you'll get the maximum value. So 10 C5, maximum value, T6 max, we are calculating 10 C5, 2 by 3, square root of 1 by 3. This is the maximum value, right? 10 factorial by 5 factorial by 5 factorial, multiply 2 by 3 root 3. This is the maximum value, right? Okay. And what you need to do is, to make sure this is the maximum value, what you can do is, you can find out f double dash x at this point. Yes, if it is negative, then of course that, that it is a maximum value. So you can check that this is the maximum value. So that is matching with, okay, exactly matching with option D. Isn't it? The question is from the world of definite integrals which says we need to figure out the value of this particular expression involving sigma and integral where this denotes gif of x. Let's understand what is this question. I am telling you this is a two-step question once you decode this. Right? Once you understand what is it is trying to say. So here this is sigma and integral. Let's first get rid of this sigma, the summation. Let's do that. The moment you put n equals to 1, so you get what? 0 to 1 e raised to power x minus gif of x dx. The moment you put n equals to 2, you get 1 to 2, same thing. The moment you put n equals to 3, you get 2 to 3, integral of same thing. And last, if you put, what should you put? Last, you should put 100, you get 99 to 100 e raised to power x minus gif of x with respect to dx. Right? Now let's focus on gif of x. Because now you have in every integral, you have upper and lower limit. Isn't it? So between 0 and 1, if I talk about between 0 and 1, if x belongs to 0 to 1, gif of x would be equal to what? 0. So why not just remove it? Right? Let's do that in ne next step. So you have 0 to 1 e raised to power x dx. Isn't it? And you have, if I talk about x belongs to 1 to 2, gif of x would be what? 1. So let's replace this by 1. So 1 to 2 e raised to power x minus 1 dx. Similarly, this will become 2 this time. Between 2 and 3, gif of x would be what? 2. So e raised to power x minus 2 dx. And lower limit is 2, upper limit is 3. And you have last... 99 to e raised to power x minus 99 dx. Right now, this is very basic definite integral question. Let's do that. Okay, so you have the integration of e raised to power x is what? e raised to power x, upper and lower limit, 0 to 1. Then you have integration of this exactly same, 1 to 2 this time. Then you have e raised to power x minus 2. 2 to 3, you have last e raised to power x minus 99, 99 to 100. Right, just put upper and lower limit. Let's calculate the final value. So here you have e raised to power 1 minus e raised to power 0. e raised to power 0 is 1. Okay, and you have this. 
again if you put x equals to 2 you are having e raised to power 1 minus e raised to power 0 if you put the lower limit as well e raised to power 1 minus 1 then you have again e minus 1 e minus 1 e minus 1 and so on up to e minus 1 now the question comes that how many times you are getting this e minus 1 the answer would be e minus 1 multiply number of times this term is getting right so you can see that in here how many terms initially were there from n equals to 1 to n equals to 100 you are having 100 terms hence 100 times e minus 1 would be your answer which is exactly matching with option a easy question isn't it let's have a look at this question it is given that the rate of growth of bacteria in a culture is proportional to number of bacteria present. While we read the question, let's create the equation gradually. So, let us assume that x be the number of bacteria. Rate of growth of bacteria would be what? dx by dt. That is proportional to number itself. dx by dt is proportional to x. Hence, dx by dt is equals to lambda x. Further, it is given that initially the bacteria count is 1000. So, at t equals to 0, bacteria count would be what? 1000. Okay, alright, cool. And next it is given that in 2 hours, the bacteria is increased by, number of bacteria is increased by 20%. Initially, it was 1000. 20% 20 of 1000 would be what? 200. So, overall 1200 bacteria at t equals to 2. Okay, it is given that the population of bacteria is 2000 after this much r which is what k by log 6 by 5 then we need to figure out the value of k by log 2 in this we need to figure out the value of k so for that we need to solve this differential how to do that by integrating yes dx by x equals to lambda times dt let's integrate on both the side lower limit at t equals to 0 1000 is the count and at t equals to some time t x is the count right so now we have what i have ln Okay, I have dx by x equals to lambda t, 0, this is 1000, this is t, this is x. Let's just integrate on both the sides. ln x, this is 1000, this is x equals to lambda times t. So, this is what ln x minus ln 1000, which is ln x by 1000. ln x by 1000 equals to what? Lambda t, right? Now, one more information I know is at t equals to 2, x equals to 1200. Let's just put the value to get the value of lambda. ln 1200 by 1000 equals to lambda t. And t over here is 2. Right? So, we have 0 and 0 are gone. So, this is 5, this is 6. ln 6 by 5. So, the value of lambda we are getting is half ln 6 by 5. Isn't it? The moment I get the value of lambda, let's just put over here ln x by 1000 equals to what? Half t ln 6 by 5. Right? Let's take anti-log. So, we have x by 1000 equals to e raised to power t by 2 multiply ln 6 by 5. Let's just shift 1000 on the right hand side. So, we have x equal to 1000 multiply e raised to power t by 2 ln 6 by 5 just like this right now in the question it is given that at x e at t equals to k by log 6 by 5 we have bacteria count 2000 let's just put the value right to get the value of k over here so x is 2000 so this is 2000 which is equals to 1000 e raised to power t by 2 what is t over here so 2000 equals to 1000 e raised to power t t is what k by log 6 by 5 we have a 2 in denominator and then we have ln 6 by 5 as well so these two terms are gone so we have these two these three zeros we can cancel out 2 equals to e raised to power k by 2 isn't it let's take logarithm on both the sides ln 2 equals to ln e raised to power k by 2 so that would be what k by 2 2 ln 2 is the value of k Yes, the value of k is 2 ln 2. Right? Okay. And now we need to figure out the value of k by ln 2. Yes, what we want is k by ln 2. 
in here you can see the value of k by ln2 is nothing but 2 so finally we need to square to get the final answer so that would be 4 so k by ln2 whole square would be 2 square that is equal to what 4 option a is the right answer from the world of vectors we have this question where a and b are perpendicular vectors and we need to tell the value of this particular expression involving so many cross products between a and b vector which is a cross a cross a cross a cross b okay so let's begin this is not a difficult question you just need to know a little bit about vector triple product yes vector triple product so i'll be focusing on this can you see this is a vector triple product a cross a cross b a cross a cross b right let's focus on this so this will be rest term will be as it is so we have a cross and then we have a cross and then we have this vector with us right let's expand the vector triple product so here we will be having dot dot product between these two a dot b and outside this will having middle one that is a vector minus of minus of now we will have a dot a and outside this i'll be having b vector yes this is how we expand vector triple product okay okay cool but a and b are perpendicular vectors isn't it what is the dot product between two perpendicular vectors dot product between two perpendicular vectors is zero this term is gone see how easy this question is becoming now a cross a cross we have zero minus so this would be what a dot a is what a dot a is modulus magnitude of a vector square and outside this you have b of course you have a negative sign all right okay so cross product between these two isn't it so what i'll be doing is a cross okay then we have a cross minus b yes a cross minus b or we can say that a cross b and then outside this you have a magnitude minus of this square right so now what do you have actually you have minus of magnitude of a square and a cross a cross b where this is inside the bracket that's all let's again apply vector triple product last step so minus magnitude of a vector square and you have dot product of a and b outside this you have middle one a vector minus now you have a dot a outside this you have b vector right cool again a dot b is zero so what do you have minus magnitude of a vector square again you have minus magnitude of a vector square so you have plus magnitude of a vector raised to power 4 and you have b vector yes so finally you have magnitude of a vector raised to power 4 along with you have b vectors so option c is absolutely right in this question you just need to know how to expand vector triple product okay the question is from the topic geometric progression which says for an increasing geometric series sum of second and sixth term is 25 by 2 product of third and fifth term is 25 we need to figure out the sum of fourth sixth and eighth terms right to figure out sum of fourth sixth and eighth term we need to figure out first term and common ratio of this geometric progression just this geometric series okay so you here we have first given condition second and sixth second term is ar sixth term is ar raised to power 5 that is equal to 25 by 2 here first term is a common ratio is r right Next, we have product of third and fifth term. What is third term? AR square. What is fifth term? AR raised to power 4. That is equal to 25. So, here we have A square R raised to power 6 equal to 25. Or you have AR cube. The whole square is 25. Now, you have two values of AR cube. Either plus 5 or minus 5. Right? This AR cube, I am not marking it as negative because both should be positive and moreover r should be greater than 1 because this is an increasing geometric series right 
so we have ar cube equals to 5 let's write it down over here a is first term r is common ratio and we have second and sixth term sum of these two is 25 by 2 and we have ar cube equals to 5 in here a would be equals to 5 by r cube isn't it we are solving for a and r let's just put the value of a over here if i do that what do i get 5 by r cube in place of a multiply r plus 5 by r cube multiply r raised to power 5 that is equals to 25 by 2 right 5 5 the 25 isn't it 1 by r square plus r square is 5 okay 1 by r square plus r square is 5 by 2 right the moment i put r square equals to t what do i have t plus 1 by t equals to 5 by 2 this is a quadratic in t if you solve it you will have quadratic in t 2t square minus 5t plus 2 equals to 0 let's just split this quadratic now so this is the quadratic right you all know t equals to r square so this would be what 2t minus 1 t minus 2 equals to 0 hence two values of t are nothing but either half or 2 right so the value of r square would be equal to what half or 2 right r value the value of r would be positive for an increasing gp so r would be either 1 by root 2 but r should be greater than 1 for an increasing gp yes so r is equals to root 2 the only r we have selected is root 2 greater than 1 because this gp is an increasing one now you have the value of r if you put the value of r over here what do you get is the value of a so a is 5 by okay 2 root 2 and you need to figure out the sum of fourth sixth and eighth term yes fourth sixth and eighth term let's take out ar cube common from this so ar cube plus AR cube multiply 1 plus R square plus R raised to power 4. Okay, let's just put the value. So, here you have A. Okay, already discussed AR cube is what? AR cube is 5, isn't it? And then you have 1 plus R square. R square you have 2. R raised to power 4 you have 4. Right? So, 4, 5, 6, 7, 5, so 35 is the answer of this particular question. Which is exactly matching with option A. Okay. The question is the freebie question from the topic 3D geometry. In which we need to figure out which of the planes out of these three are parallel. Right. So, this is just pure observation based question. So, as we can see. Okay. Let's just simplify all the planes P1. Let's divide P1 by 3. So, I get 3 and then this is 5, this is 7, this is 3. So, x plus 5y plus 7z equals to 3. This is plane 1. Plane 2 is already in the simplest form. x minus 3y minus z equals to 5. And what about p3? So, let's just divide this p3 by 2. So, what I have is x plus 5y plus 7z equals to 5 by 2. Do I need to tell you that when whenever... The variable part is exactly same or proportional and the constant part are not equal then these two plane would be parallel hence P1 and P3 are parallel while P2 is a different plane right so option A is absolutely right just a freebie question 10 second question isn't it the question is from the chapter sequence and series and moreover if you carefully observe we need to figure out the sum of this infinite series what kind of series is this numerator okay denominator says that this is geometric progression but the numerator says 2 7 12 17 it says that this one is arithmetic progression so this is what arithmetic or geometric progression right so infinite series is there how we solve it we take s equals to the complete series then in the next step we multiply common ratio in this equation in this equation what is common ratio 1 by 3 let's multiply 1 by 3 throughout so here we have 1 by 3 1 multiply common ratio 1 by 3 what is this 1 by 3 but i'll be not writing 1 by 3 below this one in fact i'll be skipping this and writing over here 
Why? Because now you see these are the two like terms. Isn't it? 2 by 3 and 1 by 3 subtraction would be much easier. And then in the next term, in this term, let's multiply 1 by 3. What do you get? 2 by 3 square, then 7 by 3 cube, then 12 by 3 raised to power 4 and so on up to infinity. Let's just subtract these two. So 2 by 3 is equal to 1 as it is. Then we have 1 by 3 as it is, right? Subtraction of these two. And then we have subtraction of these two. Now I start having 5 in the numerator. 5 by 3 square, 5 by 3 cube, 5 by 3 raised to power 4 and so on up to infinity. Here can you see if you take 5 common you have geometric series, pure geometric series whose formula you know. So you have 2s by 3 equals to 4 by 3 plus Let's apply, let's take 5 common. So you have 1 by 3 square plus 1 by 3 cube. Infinite series up to infinity. Right? And you know sum of infinite series is A by 1 minus R. Let's apply this formula. So 2s by 3 equals to 4 by 3 plus 5 multiply. A is what? 1 by 9 whole upon 1 minus R is what? 1 by 3. If you solve this, what would you get? 2s by 3 equals to 4 by 3 plus 5. Multiply 1 by 9 by 2 by 3. This is gone. So you are actually left with 2s by 3 equals to 4 by 3 plus 5 by 6. Let's cancel 3 from the denominator. 3 to the 6. And you are left with 2s equals to 13 by 2. Hence s equals to 13 by 4. So finally you have option C as the right answer. Alright.